it's Nikki here from Happy Hormones for Life and today I am talking about exercise. Luckily we're able to still exercise at the moment um, and hopefully going forward uh, through uh, lockdown um, but what about you know generally but also what how do we know what kind of the best exercise is for us and our hormones especially when we're over 40 and going through perimenopause and beyond. So exercise is absolutely vital for hormone balance. It's been shown to um, reduce stress levels and also improve insulin function, but also, you know, it's getting that circulation around, getting those nutrients around in the blood. So absolutely vital that we move. But there are a lot of myths out there about exercise, and especially for women of a certain age who have to look after their hormones. So one of the myths is this whole eat less, move more thing. We're constantly told to eat less and move more, calories in, calories out, burn off those calories, right? Um, but this message is not necessarily the right message for us women over 40 who have raging hormones to consider. Um, and But, you know, we're told it's true for, for everybody. Uh, so you might have, may have in the old days when we were allowed to um, go to gyms and, and um, uh, that kind of thing or classes, you may have signed up to something uh, to kind of push your body to the max type thing, you know, insanity and all those boot camps and things like that. And if you can get the right balance, it can work brilliantly. But if you get it slightly wrong, it can actually deplete your energy stores, increase your carb and sugar cravings, and actually make your body hang on to fat even more. And you may have experienced this if you've ever joined um, a gym or started a new fitness routine and wondered why the weight wasn't just falling off you, right? So what is the right type of exercise for hormone balance? Well, obviously that depends on your individual needs. Everybody's going to be different. Um, everyone's going to have different health histories, symptoms and circumstances. But I will explain a couple of things that is generally helpful. So the first thing we want to do is get the balance between sitting too much and over exercising. And that balance is going to be different for everybody. So, you know, our modern day lives make it difficult for us not to sit all day. Um, a recent poll um, suggested that we spend on average 56 hours a week sitting down at our desks, in our cars in the old days and on the sofa. Um, so, you know, we may claim we have an active lifestyle by going to the gym, but if we're constantly sitting in long periods of time, um, it can be really damaging to our health and our hormones. On the other side of the scale, over-exercising um, can increase our stress hormones and increase the risk of muscle loss, infection and injury. So we don't want to be doing too much because obviously we have limited energy reserves and if we're particularly stressed and if you're going to the gym and um, doing long cardio or doing intense type of exercise when you're when you haven't got those uh, those um, energy reserves and those stress reserves then um, it's going to deplete you even more so as a basic rule if your exercise routine recharges you and you feel good afterwards then that's probably a good thing but if you feel depleted and exhausted afterwards then it may be taxing your adrenals and your energy too much and using up too many reserves so Listen to your body and work out what's best for you. So I'm going to just go through my top five exercises for happy hormones. First thing is to reduce your sitting time. So again, most of us sit for far too long. It's damaging. So we want to be kind of walking where possible, taking lots of breaks, setting alarms and getting up um, out of your seat for, you know, every half an hour, every 40 minutes, something like that. Using the escal um, stairs as much as possible um, and walking more. Number two coming to that is walking. I'm a massive fan of walking. It's easy to do, it's cheap, um, it's got huge benefits, especially if you are able to walk around a park or in nature somewhere, and you'll get the added benefits of that. Uh, number three is HIT or high intensity training. This has been shown to burn fat more effectively than long cardio or aerobic exercise. And it strengthens your lungs and heart. It also increases human growth hormone. Um, that's the hormone that's abundant when we're young and then um, declines rapidly as we age. And another big advantage of HIIT um, is that it improves insulin sensitivity. So a bit like intermittent fasting. Uh, so good for your waistline and your risk of disease down the line. Uh, it's not for everyone, though. You have to be kind of a fairly fit base level. So you want to be just not attacking or going into it without any preparation or, or um, previous fitness. Um, again, it's quick as well, so it take, doesn't take up much time. Number four is resistance and weights. Now, muscle mass, we know, declines as we age pretty rapidly if you don't do enough of the strength training. Um, the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn, reducing your fat stores. Um, high cortisol and stress has a negative impact on muscle as well. So building muscle is incredibly important as you get older, especially if you're overstressed. 
um, and your fat to muscle ratio is what we're aiming to improve. So you may not see, you know, actual weight loss off the scales. We're not really interested in that. We're looking at basically your fat and muscle uh, ratio. Um, strength training also is, is resistance work. So it lowers your risk of osteoporosis, looks after your bones, especially as we head towards menopause. This does not mean you want to turn into Arnie in the gym. A set of weights at home will do the trick or you can just use your own body weight. Yoga and Pilates are great for that as well. Or, you know, go outside and use a park bench if that's your thing. And the last thing I want to talk about is yoga and Pilates. So many benefits um, in terms of flexibility, strength, core work, posture, stress and mood. It's pretty much the ultimate anti-aging exercise. And, you know, yoga came first, but Pilates is uh, is, a, is another form of it in, 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 uh, as such. Probably Pilates teachers won't agree with that, but um, both really, really beneficial. So, I mean, when you do yoga, you're pretty much focused on the pose. You're trying to hold, remembering to breathe. It's almost impossible to think about anything else. It's very mindful. And being mindful and present, present is so difficult in our busy, busy lives. So taking the time for yourself to do that for yourself and get all those additional benefits it's pretty much a no-brainer. So um, if you can't, if you've tried yoga before or Pilates before and you, you didn't really enjoy it, maybe it was the wrong class for you. So there's lots and lots of classes now online, which is brilliant. You can do it at home in the comfort of your own um, house and you don't have to be worrying about what everyone else is thinking about you. A really good place to start is Yoga with Adrienne. Um, she's on YouTube, chan uh, YouTube channel and she does an amazing 30-day program, which is completely free. So you can just start with that if you want to ease your way in. Um, Jessica Stewart's also brilliant, a London-based yoga teacher. And I just persevere. If you find, um, if you don't like it initially, like I said, it may be that you've got the wrong uh, teacher. Uh, lastly, core and pelvic floor strength. Incredibly important as we get older. Some of us have those oops moments when you cough or you laugh or you sneeze. <laughs> you know what I mean, ladies. Um, and it's really important to keep your core and pelvic floor strong, especially if you've had kids or um, any kind of um, operations, etc. So the best program in my view for this is Mooty System, run by the lovely Wendy Powell. It's short for Mummy Tummy. So it was. it's really, really designed to strengthen your core, really get your pelvic floor in a, in a good state and keep you get you fit in a really safe way. And the best thing is it's all online, you can do it in the privacy of your own home. I haven't included endurance type cardio in this list, not because there's anything wrong with it at all. There are lots of benefits to cardio work. It just doesn't make my top five for, five for hormone balance after 40. And if you're running long distances, that's absolutely fine as long as you've got the energy and the adrenal reserves for it. So find what works for you and feels good for you. Um, vary it as much as possible and do it consistently. That's my message today. So if you need help with your hormones or your health, do get in touch and we can discuss your options. Take care.